Hello, uh, this is um, uh, my feedback on the homework on uh, narrative techniques in, in The Great Gatsby after your first couple of weeks doing this. I know you've been busy with UCAS, but um, I want to go through um, a couple of things to help improve the detail of your writing so that you get more marks in the coursework. The first thing to think about is the question. The question is in two parts. Uh, firstly, I, I wanted you to, well, tell me all the different narrative techniques that Fitzgerald employs in The Great, in the great Gatsby. But to go further and to get extra marks and to, to really get into the band five, you've got to explain the uses that Fitzgerald makes of these. Uh, and so you're, you're really trying to um, explain the writer's intentions, uh, the influence on meaning, how uh, it makes the reader... Uh, react to characters and events. Okay, so um, I'll show you two different pieces of work, um, two different paragraphs. Um, kept the names off. Um, the first one um, makes a couple of um, uh, correct points about uh, the different kinds of use of, uh, uh, of narrator. So we have the idea that, first of all, Nick is unreliable. He's a framed narrator, but we need to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and there is some sense of trying to discuss the idea of choosing a first-person narrator. It gives the reader a sense of immediacy and direct involvement in the plot, well, which, while is true, it could definitely do with some um, elaboration here. Um, what do they mean by um, immediacy? Well, maybe uh, we form a relationship with Nick, we start to trust him, we start to share his outlook on things. Um, and maybe um, that could be illuminated with, with an example in, in, in the plot. Um, but then uh, what happens is, in, instead of illuminating that here, they... Um, they they go, they come on to make a new point a however which that could have been a a good place to maybe try and develop a point. Um, we get the um, the the um, the understanding that Fitzgerald switches the narrative, which is true at different times. He he can't always use the first person narrative, and so he switches so that sometimes we get Jordan's Baker account of of the early part of um, Gatsby and Daisy's relationship. Um, we need that because Nick wouldn't have been present and so we need to fill in the gaps. And so maybe this could be just explored a little bit how Fitzgerald is allowing the reader more information than they would have got originally from Nick. And so it allows us to make judgments about Gatsby and about the various characters in the book. Um, but... The, the the uses of uh, of that narrative aren't really explained in, in, in some detail here. Um, we go back to the subject of Nick being uh, an, perhaps an unreliable na narrator, and you know while this is true, it would be interesting to see well where is he unreliable and and why. Um, but we, we, we tend to jump to another point here in that he's kind of literary. In some ways, this, this is a separate point completely and could be, could be looked at in more detail uh, later. Um, so we tend to have here a list of the different ways in which the narr narrative is used, but we, the, um, the response isn't really getting to grips with, with why. Okay, so we know that he's a, he claims to be an honest person, um, but perhaps the reader uh, finds this a little contradictory. This would be an area that could be explored in more detail. Where, for instance, does Nick come across as contradictory? Um, perhaps in his presentation of um, Gatsby himself, that could be explored in some detail. How Gatsby is both... Uh, presented as a fraud and someone who's playing a role. But at other times, Nick contradicts that and shows him to be honest and true. Um, and maybe these contradictions might, might be related to some of the themes in, in the book. 
and maybe how Fitzgerald is trying to explore the, uh, the American dream. So we're left with the, uh, the last sentence, the reader can only criticise Nick according to his voice and tone. Well, that's kind of a little general, and it might be an idea to sort of talk about, well, where can we criticise Nick? Can we criticise Nick for perhaps his attitude to women, his uh, fascination with the rich, uh, maybe the way he, he condescends and looks down on people like Myrtle in the description of Myrtle. These would offer um, more interesting ideas as to the uses of the narrative technique, which would then get more, more points for the, um, uh, for the candidate. Right, I'm going to move on to... Uh, OK, the second um, example is um, slightly more successful um, uh, response to the question, and I'll try and explain why and highlight certain, certain points in it. Um, I think the candidate, is, uh, the student, is still making the same points as the first one. So um, the you know the the, the straight way is we have um, Nick as an unreliable and contradictory narrator, but there is some um, offering of evidence. They bring in a, a third party, the video that we looked at, and there is some exploration of um, how he reserves judgment. I've just gone through that. Um, but then how he makes judgments of people, and they give two um, well-chosen examples of um, uh, his judgments he makes against Gatsby. Um, and they're making some conclusions that Nick's telling of the story uh, is maybe an exaggerated version of what happened. Now that's quite quite an interesting uh, point to make, and um, it could be it, that could be explored in in another sense. They why why would uh, um, Fitzgerald exaggerate um, the story through Nick? What might be his reasons for that? Well, maybe uh, it might it might come on to exploring themes such as um, the American dream, um, how people are caught up in dreams, how um, uh, Gatsby's dream is seen as some kind of romantic quest. So that could be explored. Uh, uh, and maybe offer sort of fertile sort of uh, ground for gaining more points. Um, on the subject again, of Nick not being as trustworthy as he claims to be, we um, we could have a few more examples of that, um, just to show a wide range in knowledge of the text. So maybe. Um, how he kind of hides his story, uh, um, the backstory of Gatsby and how he became rich could be explored. And then why? Always coming back to um, uh, why does, why does um, Tennessee Williams do this? It's not Tennessee Williams, but Fitzgerald. So they, they do go on to say that, which makes this more successful. Um, only hints at are made about his illegal, um, his illegal background, uh, and it's made by other characters. But Nick doesn't seem to want to expose or explore it in too much detail. There's a new point here about how um, um, here this uh, this gives the reader the, the impression that Nick is ignoring important parts of the story in an attempt to make his retelling more interesting. Well, I think that needs uh, that needs some exploration here. Um, I don't think it's ever a good idea to uh, to explain points in the same sentence because um, you're limiting yourself to what you can actually say. Um, you're giving yourself maybe half a sentence to explain something that really. It, Need some exploration, and that's it's in your explanation that you're going to get the marks in 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 the coursework. So it, it it's worth stopping, making a full stop, not a semicolon, and exploring in two or three sentences. So we go on to the point about how he was he he he's rather literary in college, suggesting that he's a self conscious narrator. He wants to be a good writer. Um, and they, they go on to say that Nick suggests he leaves things out of the story for this reason. 
that he's right in a, a work of fiction. Um, now that's that's quite an interesting point to make, and this is where you you could make a number of AO2 points that would get you marks with the uh, coursework moderator examiner. Um, and and this candidate does go on to offer some examples here. So they say that Ta Daisy and Tom's perfect marriage is punctuated by um, uh, the modern world uh, through the telephone. So that we see things are not as rosy as they appear, and which I, I think is a, is a good example. Um, what really convinces um, teachers when they're marking work is not that you can just give one good example, which is here, but that you can follow on with maybe two or three more examples to really convince and, and, and show that you've explored this point. You know, the, the brain's hardwired to sort of work in sort of um, lists of three, and so it, it does come across as more convincing if you can offer some more examples here. So let's consider this question, because a lot of people looked at that in their, in their answer, the idea that Nick is uh, rather literary and he's creating this story of Gatsby and he's shaping it in his own literary way. Well, this could be explored with two or three more examples. What I would put down for that is maybe I would explore in some way the use of symbolism in the novel and how um, Gatsby is being portrayed as a romantic figure. Uh, this both reveals the character of Nick and his literary um, aspirations but it also shows the candidate's knowledge that um, we're being presented and shaped um, to understand this story through Nick's eyes. And he sees Gatsby as the romantic figure, which may be true. It may also be a contradiction. Maybe Gatsby isn't this figure, but he's only in the eyes of Nick that he seems to be seen as this romantic hero. And as we see here, the, the candidate has made this point. If I just read what they say, this theme throughout the novel suggests that Nick's attempts to ignore the potentially unpleasant details of Gatsby's past to present the image of a romantic hero suggests that he may not be as trustworthy as he claims. And so we have a, a, a candidate who is exploring and, and, and making conclusions uh, and, and coming back to not only what are the narrative techniques, but what use does Fitzgerald make of them? Um, and then we have this sense of the uh, the last part of this uh, is the the students' response. What do they think? Um, this is a, a really important part of AO three. Okay, um, that we have this sense of your talking, not just referring to uh, another candidate, but your you're giving your response to what you think is going on and you're giving your response to what you think Fitzgerald is saying in this particular piece of work. Okay, um, I hope in some way you found this helpful. Uh, thank you. Okay, finally, I'd like to sum up some of the things that I was I was hoping that um, um, you, you will write uh, when talking about narrative in The Great Gatsby. Um, and much of this is uh, articulated better on the e-magazine website, uh, Nicholas Treadle's video e-clips on Great Gatsby. Okay, but with narrative, we 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 have a first-person narrative, but um, it's fragmented. We um, we 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 have snapshots from other people. Uh, we have. Um, we 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 don't have entirely a linear plot. Um, it's broken up so that Nick is choosing exactly what parts or what episodes he thinks he, we, that we should um, be told about and he's leaving other things out and it's in what he leaves out and what he, he, he decides to include that helps us to build up a picture of Gatsby and of the other characters and of Nick himself um, because Nick is a framed narrator. What that means is he starts the story, he introduces himself and tells us a story with, you know, within the frame. So he's 
he's he's he's he's framing the whole story of uh, of Gatsby, and we return to him at the end. And the thing with a framed uh, narrative is that we um, we see how they've been changed by their by their story. Um, we see well at the end. It's always interesting to see how how the frame narrator Nick uh, has has been shaped by the story that he's told. Has he changed or or um, does he view these events that happened in the past in a new way? Because it also he also chooses to have this as a um, um, an episode episodic story it allows the story to be quite short the novel's quite short we don't have everything we just have episodes some of those are really fragmented so that when uh he's really drunk we just get snapshots of episodes that kind of mimic i suppose what it's like being drunk and just having visions of uh what the night before was like and some things are left unexplained a little bit like you know how does he end up in this bedroom uh with this guy um looking at photographs and uh, it's left unexplained, so it's a little bit like a. Maybe it's it's putting us in inside this world where everyone's sort of gin soaked and uh, alcohol ridden, and uh, things just happen. Okay, many of you talked about the unreliable narrator and Nick. Uh, maybe we're all unreliable. Maybe we all what we give is only a partial uh, perspective of the true story, and that's what's quite interesting in the Great Gatsby. Uh, we get Nick's view of events and of course Nick is partial to uh, different things he's, uh, he's very much um, taken up by the idea of a romantic quest that he sees in Gatsby whether Gatsby sees it or not is uh, another matter but he sees it and so he, he paints this quest in romantic symbolic ways and so how he sees this story shapes how he tells the story but equally, he contradicts himself, and, and and maybe that's you know what human nature is like. He he's fascinated by just like Fitzgerald, he's fascinated by the the rich, but repelled by them at the same time. So he's drawn to this world and and, and paints this world in you know in, in glorious colours. But at the same time, he's an outsider looking in, uh, like the person on the street looking in a window. The outsider, he's able to make judgments on it while at the same time being drawn to it. You know, and that is by its nature contra contradictory. He has aspirations of writing the great novel. He's like the persona of the writer in a way. And so, how he writes his novel, it, or how he tells his story, is very literary. So, you would talk about things like symbolism, you would talk about the deliberate parallels and patterns, and the obvious symbolism of the, uh, uh, of the setting and the landscape, the Valley of Ashes. Uh, and the colours uh, associated with characters like Daisy, the gold, and the uh, and the and the cars, uh, and how there's this mixture of modernism uh, and technology, uh, but contrasted with the kind of romanticism of a quest, and how that's portrayed and symbolised by these green lights uh, and. Um, and, and Gatsby's portrayed isolated in the moonlight. It's a very kind of romantically told story, but at the same time it's punctuated by the modern world. And it's punctuated by his criticism of the modern world as well. In many ways this can be seen as uh, Fitzgerald's eulogy on a lost generation and a criticism of the American dream and how the symbolism sort of relates to that. So finally, sort of multiple narratives. We get Gatsby's dad later on, Jordan. We get snippets of what people say at parties that help us build up a, uh, a perspective of, um, of Gatsby. But maybe the more perspectives we have, the less sure we are. Uh, maybe Gatsby becomes um, uh, less certain to us the more we learn about him. Maybe he's, he's unknowable. And maybe the more perspectives we have of the story, the less we have... Uh, less we are certain and you know maybe that's a hallmark of great literature that um, often like the Mona Lisa um, we're left with a mystery we're not quite sure what's going on we're not really sure if she's smiling or not and what's going on behind her eyes and equally we're never really told what or who Gatsby really is or what he really wants okay I'm doodling now so goodbye <laughs>